Hey there, it's Crystal Everdeen, and today I want to share with you how I crocheted this Mickey Mouse inspired shoulder bag that's also inspired by this teddy bear crochet handbag from this brand that my friend had one day and I was like that is so cute I could probably make that but I want to put my own spin on it because I'm a huge Disney fan so I decided to make a Disney version so here we are so for this project I'm using four different colors of yarn I'm using black red and those are gonna be the main ones that you need and the most that you'll need and I'm also going to be using white and yellow yarn just for like smaller details so you don't need that much of those two colors but yeah for now we're starting with black and red and what we're going to be working on is the body of the bag so I'm going to start off with my black yarn and we're going to make the like shoulder part of it and I already made one side off camera so this is pretty much the shape that we're going to be making for the like shoulder part of it the one with a hole in it the faceless part of Mickey <laughs> and it's gonna be essentially you know this shape like a semicircle but with a hole in the middle and then the bottom half will attach the red yarn and then we'll make a regular semicircle and that side is much easier than this side this side is a little bit more complicated but let's go ahead and start with it so again this is the shape that you're going to be making and here's a close-up of what it looks like essentially this is what we're going to do we're going to make a few rows of single crochet um well how many did i make one two three four five six six rows of single crochet and then we're going to make each side separately so i just started on this side and just built from here to here from here to here until i reached about this point and then I um, attached the yarn to this side and I did the exact same thing, just built rows and rows of single crochet until about right here. And then I connected the two sides together with a uh, chain right here, so I single crocheted right here. And then I kind of just attached them together like this. And that's how I did this portion of the project and I just wanted to give you a little visual and explanation before we actually did it just in case that was easier for you to understand, but that's essentially what we're going to do right now. So, for starters, we're going to grab our black yarn, and we're going to chain 40 chains. That's if you want the same size as mine, you could, of course, make it bigger or smaller, totally up to you. The way I figured out that this was going to be 40 chains was essentially I just kept chaining until I was happy with how I imagined it would look like. It's just a bunch of trial and error and I have a band-aid on my thumb right now so it's a little bit difficult to grab this. But essentially you're going to make a slip knot and now again if you are a complete beginner to crochet I would recommend that you check out my crochet for beginners video that I will link in the description box down below along with some more beginner friendly tutorials because this one might be a little bit more difficult just because we're going to be dealing with some wonky shapes here and a lot of like freestyling. <laughs> I do not have a pattern or anything. I'm just making it up as I go along. So here we go. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, three, nine, forty. Now I'm just going to double check that it actually was 40 because I like never count my chains or anything. And yeah, it looks like it was 40 chains. Okay, I was right. So yes, 40 chains later, you're going to go back on it with a single crochet. And a single crochet is through the stitch, yarn over, back through a stitch, yarn over, back through two loops. And again, I do go over all of the basic stitches in my crocheting for beginners video linked in the description box below if you want to practice with that for a bit and then maybe try this out, I don't know, um, totally up to you. But yeah, it's linked in the description box below, along with, I actually forgot to mention, um, I do have links to the yarn I'm using in the description box down below as well, via my Amazon affiliate links if you wanted to purchase the same yarn that I'm using, as well as the same hook. I'm using a size 5 millimeter hook, and I will link it in the description box down below as well. So essentially all I'm doing is going back on this chain with a row of single crochet until I reach the end. And once I reach the end, I'm going to make sure that I go into the very last stitch of the row and then I'm going to chain one, then flip the project over, go into the first stitch of the new row, and then start my new row of single crochet on top of the previous row of single crochet. And it's really important to chain one when you flip the project over to start the new row and then go into the very first stitch that way your edges remain straight like this and yeah so you're just going to make how many did i say six rows of um 
single crochets and then we're going to move on to the next step so just repeat that process until you've created six rows of single crochet and then I will get back to you. Okay so I've completed my rows of single crochet and now it's the same size as the first one that I made and now we're going to make these sides of the project right here so we're going to start on this side and what I'm going to do is essentially just single crochet on 10 of the stitches and then just go back and forth on just those 10. So from here again you're going to chain one, go into the very first stitch of the new row and then just go into 10 stitches of the row. Um, I was not counting on um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and now that I am on the 10th stitch I'm going to flip the project over, chain 1 and then go into the very first stitch of the new row. Again I'm just going to be working within those 10 stitches only at the edge of the project and I'm just going to keep on building and building and building until the strap is, or at least the side of the strap is um, to my liking. So I pretty much just kind of would put the project against myself as if I was going to wear it. Just like kind of envisioned uh, how long I wanted the strap to be. And I just kept going and going and going until it was long enough and I was like yeah I guess it could like wrap around my arm and then there'll be enough in the armhole. But um, I'll go ahead and let you know how many rows I make if you're uh, planning on making the same size as me or maybe it'll just give you a better idea of how many to make. But yeah, so that's just what I'm going to do. Just keep on making rows and rows of single crochet until it is long enough for my liking. And then we're just going to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. But I'll show you what it looks like um, once I'm done with this side. So I completed all my rows of single crochet. And now I'm going to detach the yarn from this side and reattach it to the other side so right over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to go ahead and chain oh wait I told you I was going to um, give you the number of rows right I forgot about that and I made a total of 36 rows of single crochet and again that's going to serve as one side of the bag and you just kind of have to like pull it so that it kind of curves a little bit like this and yeah so that's one side and now I'm going to go ahead and reattach the yarn to the other side and do the exact same thing so I'm just going to attach it right here and then I'm going to make my other side like this but there's going to be a gap in between and um, when there is the gap, that's when I'm going to um, make a chain that goes along the middle and attaches the two together. And I'm just going to um, crochet them together. So yeah, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like once I'm done with this side now. So again, I'm just going to reattach the black yarn to this side of the project now. And I'm going to only work within the first 10 stitches of this side of the project and then just go back and forth only on those 10 stitches and build one side of the strap that is the same size as this side. And again, that was 36 rows of single crochet. What is going on with my camera? Okay, well I'll go ahead and uh, meet you when I'm done. Okay, so I've completed both sides and it looks like this now. And what we're going to do is chain a chain to connect the two sides together. So from here, I'm just going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and let's see if that's long enough. Mm, I don't know that's kind of too square and I kind of want to make it smaller so that it can it kind of uh, like forces it to go in like this and look more like an oval so I think maybe a little bit less than that and yeah I think that's good so how many is that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen and 
once I have decided the length of the chain, I'm going to now attach it to the other side so now that they will be connected. And yeah, just slip stitch them together like this. And now they're attached. So now what I'm going to do is just go back and forth on this area. So I'm going to go here and then on the other side and then on this side and then on the other side and this side and this side until I reach the top of both sides and then um, I'll be done with this portion of the bag. So I'm actually going to single crochet into the side of this, turn it, and then I'm going to make a row of single crochet on the actual chain that I created and once I reach the other side I'll go ahead and um, go into this stitch and then start the new row then when I reach this side I'll go into this side of this stitch and then start the new row and so on and so forth until this gap is nice and full so for now it looks like this and then once we add the stitches it's going to fill out. So this is what the project looks like after I went ahead and connected the two sides together. So it's this little semicircle right here. It's a little wonky looking but I think when I put everything together um, there'll be more structure to it. Like this side's a little bit wonky as well because you know me I don't do patterns or counting or anything I just go off of what it looks like so <laughs> not everything's going to be perfect like at all. Anyway so it's about the same size as the first one, so uh, I'm going to say that is a success. So now we're going to work on the red part, and uh, if you already noticed, this isn't a square project. We want our Mickey to be a little bit pudgy, um, and overall the shape of this project is like a peanut. So what we're going to do is, I'm, well at least this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach the red yarn to the bottom of the black portion of the project that we just completed and uh, I'm going to make rows and rows and rows of single crochet um, as I normally would so we're going to keep it relatively square up, to, up until about this point and then I'm going to round it out by decreasing and what I do to decrease is I simply um, skip a stitch on each side of the row so um how you know how you typically chain one flip the project over go into the very first stitch and then you know complete the row well for me i actually chain one flip the project over go into the very first stitch still but then i skip the second stitch of the new row and then continue on with the rest of the row and little by little it's going to uh, start to pull in like this and make it more and more round so that's what I'm going to do so from here again I'm just going to grab this piece and I'm going to attach the red yarn to this portion and then make some rows of single crochet with the red yarn just as I normally would and then when I get to the point where I want the project to start rounding out that's when I'll start decreasing which is again just skipping that one stitch um, at the beginning of every row so yeah so from here just make some rows and rows of snow crochet with your red yarn and I will get back to you after a few more rows so you know what it looks like okay so I'm a little less than halfway done with the bottom portion of the project here and at this point I want to start curving it inward so you can see when you line them up together from here to here is where it pretty much is straight and then from here that's when it starts to curve in so this is where I started to decrease so that it curved in a little bit so it's like rounder and more peanut shaped so from here again uh, every time we reach the end of the row we would chain one flip the project over and then go into every single stitch but now at the end of the row we're going to uh, skip a stitch and start decreasing the number of total stitches per row and when you do that it's going to start pulling the project inward and kind of making it more round and that's the shape that I'm going for so hopefully 
um, it actually comes out, you know, like little bean shaped or little peanut shaped. So when you reach the end of every row, you're still going to go into the very last stitch. You're still going to chain one. You're still going to flip the project over and you're still going to go into the very first stitch of the new row, but you're now going to skip over that second stitch of the new row. And then you're just going to move on and continue <laughs> um, going into every single stitch of this next row. So really the only difference from now on is that you're going to be skipping that second stitch. And little by little, you may not see it at first, but little by little it's going to start pulling the project inward and making it more round. So just continue to do that until you reach the bottom of the project and you're satisfied with how round it is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and continue making rows and rows this way and then I'll show you what it looks like in the end and then we can go ahead and start the next step. Okay so I've completed my second uh, Mickey shape and now I have two little Mickey beans that are the same exact size so that when we eventually attach them together they're nice and symmetrical. So uh, what I'm going to do now is actually work on the limbs of Mickey Mouse. So this is where we're going to bring in your other two colors. So we're still going to work with black and red but also yellow and white. And these are the limbs that I'm going for here. So this is going to be his little arm and his hand so it's gonna consist of black and white yarn and the white yarn is of course for Mickey's iconic gloves and I decided to just make them little like stubby um, chibi little arms instead of full-on uh, hands with fingers and stuff so I feel like that would actually kind of look kind of a little bit creepy but uh, yeah that's gonna be the arm and then for his foot slash like his leg I used red black and yellow for part of his shorts his leg and then his shoes so uh, um, if, uh, just a very simple shape I think that the simplicity of everything just kind of makes it cuter and also easier to crochet so I'm planning on attaching them like this so a little arm right here and then a little leg right here so yeah I think that looks really cute and then of course we're going to go ahead and add the ears later those are really easy to make but I just wanted to get this out of the way because um, you know me with odd shapes very difficult for me to explain it so let's go ahead and <laughs> try to go over it so first we're going to start off with the little arm and you're going to need to make four of these because we need a front and back kind of like this so and of course we need two of them on each side so you need to make four of these same with the feet as well so for this one you're going to go ahead and grab your black yarn first and you're going to create a slip knot like you normally would and again struggling because we're in a band-aid and then you're going to chain four so one two three Four, and then you're going to go back on that chain with a single crochet and once you reach the end you're going to yeah okay this is the last stitch and then once you reach the end you're going to chain one put the project over go into the very first stitch and then go back on that row of single crochet but now when you reach the end of this row you're going to chain two one two then go back on that chain and complete the rest of the row and what we're doing here is increasing the number of stitches per row specifically on one side only and that's going to help us make this little triangle shape so we started of course up here with just the four stitches and then one side is straight, you can see it better this way. One side is straight and the other side extends this way so it increases. So on only one side we're just going to keep adding that extra stitch uh, on one side so it could get larger and larger on one side and still stay straight on the other side. And that will create the little Mickey arm. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. Um, but that's how I'm making the little triangle shape by just extending on one side. So I'm just going to complete this other side as I normally would without making that extra chain. So it's just a regular chain one 
and then go back on the next row but then once I reach the end of this row the one that I'm extending I'm going to go ahead and chain two instead of chain one so one two then I'm going to go back on it and yeah it's just going to continue growing from there and it'll look more and more like a triangle and once you're happy with the size of the arm then you would attach the white yarn and make the little glove but for now I'm just going to continue with this pattern and continue making the triangle shape and once I'm done I will get back to you. This is what my project looks like after a few more rows of following that pattern and it is the same size as the one I already made so I know that uh, I'm going to be happy with the um, size of it. Now I am thinking maybe it is a little bit too small so again if you want to make it bigger than the one that I made totally up to you um, all the sizes and stuff are again totally up to you I mean this is just a guide you can do whatever you want I'm just giving you ideas on uh, how to make yours based on what I'm doing to make mine so from here I'm going to attach the white yarn from where I left off and I'm going to um, kind of do the opposite of what we were doing with the black yarn so with the black yarn we were extending we're uh, increasing the number of stitches per row and now we're going to round it out so we're essentially going to do the exact same thing we're doing with the red portion of the project where we kind of round it out by decreasing towards the bottom and we're going to just do that with the white yarn now because we kind of want the white yarn to serve as Mickey's glove and we want that to also be like rounded at the bottom just to make it a little bit cuter um, it's kind of square, not going to lie, but uh, that was my attempt to kind of make it a little bit round. I just kind of um, decreased the number of stitches uh, per row. So again, when I, when I decrease, I just skip the second stitch of the row. So I do the exact same thing as I normally do for every row where I go into every stitch, even the very last stitch. And then I go ahead and I chain one, then flip the project over, go into the very first stitch of the new row. But then I skip over that second stitch and just go right into the third stitch and continue on my way. Do the exact same thing every single time I approach the end and start a new row. And little by little it will decrease and kind of round out the bottom. So again, that's what I want and that's how I make the little... Mickey arms. <laughs> so after a few more rows of uh, constantly decreasing, uh, this is what the project ended up looking like. The little arm like this. Kind of looks like a little cornucopia, a little turkey leg. <laughs> but yeah, this is what I'm going to be using for the arms of the project here. So kind of line them up like that. But again, you're going to make four of these because we're going to attach the two so that there's um, a design on each side and now we're going to make the legs which is fairly simple because this actually is just a square project it's just rows of red yarn followed by some rows of black yarn and then finished off with some rows of yellow yarn and uh, yeah so pretty much that's what I'm gonna do I don't know if you want me to show you but maybe I will so for the feet, I chained 18 chains, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this is going to be the width of my leg. Of course everything here is customizable, so if you think that's too much, then make less. If you want them even stubbier, even bigger, then make more chains. But yeah, this is going to be the width of my legs. And now I'm going to go back with single crochet. Pretty much everything in this project is single crochet, so yeah. And I'm just going to make probably, what, another five rows of red single crochet. Um, and then I'm going to attach the black yarn and then the yellow yarn. So yeah, for this one we're not going to be doing any decreasing. Again, this is just going to be a little square shape so everything can be 
just um, normal rows. So at the end of every row, you can just chain one, flip the project over, and then start the brand new row, and the edges could be even. So from here, chain one, flip the project over, go into the very first stitch of the new row, and then just continue on with the rest of the row. So after a few rows of that, I'm going to attach the black yarn to the project. And then I'm going to work on the portion that's going to serve as the part of Mickey's leg that shows um, underneath the shorts. So I pretty much did all of the colors with an even amount of rows. So it's like five rows of red, five rows of black, five rows of yellow. And yeah, they're fairly even like that. And I think it turned out pretty good. It does look like an extension of Mickey's shorts and then his leg and then his foot or rather his shoe so I think that that worked out well um, so yeah this is going to be another five rows of snow crochet but with black yarn now and we're going to do the exact same thing at the end of every row where we make sure that we go into the very last stitch of the row and then after going into the very last stitch of the row, we're going to chain one, then flip the project over, then go into the very first stitch of the new row, and just continue on for another few rows until we need to attach the yellow yarn. And of course, after you're done with the rows of the black yarn, you're going to attach your yellow yarn and make an equal amount of rows with the yellow yarn. And once you're done with that, then you're totally done with one of the four pieces that you need to complete Mickey's legs. So, yeah. Alrighty, so now that you know how to make the arms and the legs, you're going to, again, be making four of each. So, four of these shapes and four of these shapes. And we're also going to be making four of the little ears. So... In addition to his arms and legs, he also needs Mickey ears to really make him Mickey. So, this is going to actually be the easiest uh, part that we're making because it's just a circle. And in order to make the circle, the I guess the most complicated part of this that I always seem to kind of struggle with a little bit is the beginning. Because, well, you'll see. So, the first thing you're going to do is chain three. And then from there you're going to go into the very first chain that you just created and you're going to make a single crochet. Then from here you're going to go into the center opening of what you just created and you're going to make five single crochets inside of that same exact opening. So one, two, three, four, and five and if you absolutely cannot see what is going on right now because I know the yarn is very dark and difficult to see um, a tutorial that I think you would find very helpful for this is my how to crochet a bucket hat tutorial because I use like lighter yarn and you're able to see it plus that's an actual full-on tutorial instead of whatever this is so yeah that'll be um, much easier to follow but from here you're going to actually start crocheting on top of the single crochets that you just made instead of going into that same center uh, opening. You can see a little bit the center opening that you were just going into right now. So yeah, again, now you're going into the actual single crochets that you created and you're going to make single crochets on top of those single crochets. And from here on, every other single crochet that you go into you're going to make two single crochets so it's going to be two single crochets and one single crochet and then one single crochet inside of that one single crochet and then two single crochets inside of that one single crochet and then two single crochets inside of that one stitch and then one single crochet into that one stitch and then two single crochets inside of that one stitch and what that's going to do is that's going to keep your circle 
growing and getting bigger and not curving in because if you just do one single crochet per stitch it's going to start curving in because you're just making rows and rows of the same number of stitches as opposed to it getting bigger and bigger as you continue on so you need to be making more stitches per row and for me what works is every other uh, stitch that's when you make two single crochets inside of that one stitch and then um, one single crochet is that way it's not growing too fast because if it's growing too fast then your project will begin to ruffle and you need to uh, make less stitches per row but if it's growing too slow that means that it's curving in and you need to be making more stitches per row and again I know it's very difficult to see with this colored yarn um, but if you need more information on how to make a circle then uh, please uh, watch my um, how to crochet bucket hat video because the first step in that is you need to make a circle so <laughs> it's gonna be really easy um, but yeah you're just going to continue with that pattern until your circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you're happy with the size of a Mickey's ear and after many many rows your project should look something like this a cute little circle and again you're going to be making four of them and we're going to be attaching them together and optional you can stuff it with either um, like cotton stuffing polyfill or just extra yarn. I actually stuffed this one with extra yarn and it looks pretty, you know, sturdy and stuff. It's just a little bit heavier than um, if I were to stuff it with um, polyfill, but um, it still works. Uh, I should have showed you, huh? Dang it. Hold on. Let me open it so I can show you that there is indeed yarn in here. Yeah. Okay, so I actually filled it with the yellow yarn and it's just, you know, loose yarn and I just stuffed it in there and that's what that looks like or of course you could use polyfill uh, I got this at Walmart actually and it just looks like this yeah you could also use that to stuff um, the ears I'm going to be using this to stuff the rest of the bag so yeah totally up to you which one you want to stuff it with or you know if you have any other ideas but yeah so I'm stuffing the ears or you could just uh, leave them flat like this and just attach them together they, they'll still uh, be fairly um, like stiff so they'll stay up if you have two of them um, slip stitched together so yeah in total we have two of the main peanut body parts we have four legs we have four arms and we have four ears and once you have crocheted all of those pieces, actually, if you want to, you can also crochet um, the buttons. I totally forgot about the buttons. But yeah, just make some oval buttons. I might just cut them out of felt. I'm not sure yet. But again, you could just grab some white yarn and uh, make some ovals and then attach the buttons here. But um, yeah, so those are all of the pieces. Now we just need to attach everything together. Actually, you know what I just realized? I don't want to just attach them just like that because then it's going to be fairly flat. I do want a little bit of width for this bag. So I'm going to add in this extra like piece and that's going to kind of widen it out a little bit. So instead of it being flat like this and then just attaching it together and it only having, you know, this much space, I'm going to add this strip in and if I attach this here and to both sides like this, slip stitch it here and slip stitch it here, then it's going to widen out the project in general. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to, so for this portion, I'm just going to leave it black for, I'm just gonna match the color with it. So for the top, I'm going to have this black. And then once I reach the hands down here, I'm going to make this little portion white until it like wraps around the hand and then once I get to like this spot then I'm going to use the red yarn and just make a whole strip all around the whole bag. And uh, all I did for this was just a uh, single crochet, um, a very long strip. So uh, I made a couple rows however long you or however wide you want the um, bag to be. That's how many rows you make. And then um, I figured that it wasn't long enough, so I just continued making single crochets on the side right here. 
and just continue going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, making this longer and longer. So after I'm done with the black portion of the strip, I'm going to attach white and then go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the strip until it's long enough to wrap around the white portion of the project. And then once I re reach the red portion, I'm going to attach red and then go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and can just continue growing this strip until it wraps all around the bag and matches all the different colors of the bag. And I'll show you what the strip looks like after I'm done. So this is what the strip looks like. So I left you guys with just the black part of the strip. And then I went ahead and added white, then red, then white again because this is how I'm going to lay it out. So we have the arms right over here. And then, um, again, this is going to be the part that kind of adds some width to both sides. So it's going to be um, a little bit uh, wider, obviously. <laughs> and I need to align it so that the black part aligns with the black parts of the arm, and the white part aligns with the white parts of the hand, and then the red, obviously, with the red portion of the let's see, <laughs> of the project, and it should look a little like this. Yay! And I just realized that I forgot to make a portion for the legs. <laughs> Dang it. Well, it looks like I'm just going to attach it like it is now, and then I'll just probably just sew on the legs afterwards. And speaking of sewing, the way I'm going to attach everything is by sewing it, but if you don't have a needle and thread or you don't want to sew it, you could always just use a slip stitch and attach everything together. So here we go. Okay, so this is how I'm going to attach everything together. There are two portions of the body and then the strip, and I'm going to align the colors uh, so that they match, and I'm going to then attach the strip and the body like this right here, attach them together. I'm just going to sew along right here, or you could slip stitch along right here, and then they'll also attach the two together. And I'm just going to go all around, and I'm going to have the arms right here. So go around the arms as well. I should probably attach the arms first, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm <laughs> going back. I'm going to attach the arms first, just one part of it to each side and then I'm going to attach the um, strip to the rest of it and just go all along the body right here. So I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so I attached the um, layer to the body of the, <laughs> it looks so funny, the body of the bag and this is what it looks like when you just attach one side and now I'm going to attach the other side and then I'll show you what it looks like again here, here are the arms but um, I was not able to attach the feet because I totally forgot to include that in here. So I'm just going to attach them afterwards and they're just going to be their own thing. Oh, it's looking cute, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to attach the other side like this. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to sew all around and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I actually forgot to film it without being stuffed, and I stuffed the handle a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I attached the um, the piece that's going to make it wider all along the bag right here, as you can see. And it does look wonky, and I was getting a little bit nervous that it wasn't going to look good, so that's why I went ahead and stuffed the handle to see if like it'll look good, because this did not look good at all. And I was like, oh no. So I stuffed the handle, and it actually is coming together. I think it looks pretty good. It is still a little bit like uneven and stuff, but um, once I stuff it with more of the polyfill, then I think it'll look more even and it'll look really, really cute. So if yours is looking kind of, you know, like this, all wrinkly and weird, don't you worry. There's a good chance that it'll still look really good once you put everything together. And again, um, I'm going to have to add the legs in afterwards. But look, that's going to be cute. I think I'm just going to um, like make this into one solid piece and then stuff it with polyfill like this. So it's just like a little chubby leg like that. <laughs> and then I'm just going to sew it on here like that. And that's all I'm going to do. And then once um, I grab my ears, I'll also do the same thing with the ears. 
Now the next thing that I need to figure out is how I'm going to separate the pocket from the stuffing because you can just use this as the um, the bag itself but the thing I don't like to do is just leave it as is because then the bag gets all lumpy with all the stuff that you put in I don't like that I want it to be like more solid like this so I want to just fill it with um, polyfill for like a layer of it so it's like a nice solid shape and then uh, also just include the pocket space, but I don't know how to make the separation. So once I figure that out, I will let you know what I do. But yeah, I'm just going to work on like stuffing it a little bit more and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's a little update of what I've been doing. So again, I stuffed the handle with the polyfill and I also stuffed the little arms. And this is what it looks like. Uh, when it's nice and stuffed right and you can't have this because everything's going to be falling out and making a mess and stuff and it's going to interfere with you know what you want to put in the pocket so i decided to sew in some fabric here so you can see this like black polka dot uh fabric that i sewed in to this little triangular area i mean it doesn't look like a triangle because i just didn't shape it well but it's pretty much this little triangle area right so you just you need to cut out a little triangle or you could crochet a little triangle piece and then sew it on here or like attach it on here just so that it's nice and closed off so i'm going to do this to this side and then i'm going to actually make a pocket with the same fabric and to make the pocket i'm going to use the same polka dot fabric and just essentially fold it in half like this it's not going to it's, not gonna be, it's gonna be a square and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to seal both sides right here so it's just a solid solid on this side solid on the bottom and then open on the top and I'm going to sew in the fabric to the top portion of the pocket right here so it's just going to have a little fabric pocket and then all around the pocket that's where I'm going to uh, add the stuffing and then after I complete the pocket and then the rest of the stuffing right here I'm going to attach the two ears as well as the two little legs and then I will be done with the project Woo! okay so I went ahead and attached everything the little legs the ears and for the pocket situation it was a little bit more complicated than I thought originally I thought I was going to be able to just make a pocket out of this fabric here and just sew it in but I didn't have enough fabric plus it didn't really solve the issue that everything else was just going to be filled with the polyfill and like out in the open still so what I did is I essentially made another strip kind of like what we did here and I attached it just to the bottom portion of the inside of the bag and then I just left the rest open and that's going to be the pocket part and that's really fine because this is thick enough to uh, support whatever I put in here which honestly isn't much because it's kind of small but um, the main reason why I wanted to do that like do something is because um, if I didn't then it would be all lumpy and stuff when I put stuff in here but if I add the cotton in here or the polyfill in here it retains its shape and it's like squishier and chubbier and stuff and it's so cute if you want to do the same thing that's an idea for you and yes this is what the project looks like so far all i really need to do is add the buttons and i'm pretty much done so i did add the buttons on one side so if you're curious to know what it looks like oh this is what it looks like it's so cute so yeah all i did to make the buttons i pretty much just made a circle kind of like the ears except i kind of stretched it out to make it more oval because i feel like his buttons are more oval shaped as opposed to like just round so that's what i did you could also again just cut out a piece of felt and uh, glue it on here if that's way easier for you if i had enough felt i probably would have done that instead but yeah so after you add the buttons and your project looks like this you're pretty much done so now you can go ahead and enjoy your Mickey inspired crochet handbag. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it wasn't a full on tutorial. However, I hope that you could still use this as a general guide for ideas on how to make a bag like this. And if you do love crochet videos, I have a ton of them on my channel. I have quite a few crochet playlists that you can go ahead and watch. And yes, I do have a lot of tutorials on my channel and have some of these kinds of videos sprinkled in as well for the more like wackier kind of projects but for the most part i share tutorials so if that is what you're looking for please go ahead and check out my channel and subscribe also follow me on instagram and tiktok both at crystal everdeen it's a fun time 
So yeah, please give this video a thumbs up before you go and don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you have not already so I can see you next time. Bye and have a magical day. These days, under the sun together, these days, let's make them last forever, these days, these days, let's hope they last forever.